Hi everyone, we are the Doctors Bjorkman, a physician couple who has gone through pregnancy and shared it all with you week by week this past year, mm -hmm. and now we've actually just had our baby a couple of weeks ago. So every week we try to bring you some high quality evidence-based information from our expertise as physicians, as well as now our real life experiences as we've gone through pregnancy and now first time parenthood. Yep. And so this week we're going to be diving into that incredibly precious yet somewhat elusive topic called newborn sleep. Yes. And if you have a new baby, you know that sleep can be hard to come by. Yep. And so our goal with this episode is to share some critical things to know to try to maximize yep. sleep that your baby's getting and that you as new parents are getting too. If this is your first time meeting us, I'm Sarah and I'm a board certified OBGYN and first time mom. And I'm Kurt and I'm a board certified pediatrician and first time dad. And, and we, we are, are the Doctors Bjorkman. As we mentioned, this episode is all about newborn sleep, and we are going to share the 10 things that really have helped us to optimize sleep for baby. So make sure you stick around to the end of this video so you see all the great tips we have, as well as some of the resources that were really helpful for us. But because we know time is so valuable to all of you new parents, and for us too, as we're doing this episode with baby sleeping in the other room, uh, we're going to try to keep this episode as focused and to the point as possible. Sleep is a necessary function of life mm -hmm. and also takes up a large portion of the day for newborn babies. Mm -hmm. So this is why it is so important for caregivers to be able to help their babies get adequate and optimal sleep in those early days. Mm -hmm. It also means if baby is sleeping, then you have time to get some sleep or do some other things for you. Absolutely. And as science is learning more and more about sleep, we're starting to realize just how important it is, mm -hmm. and especially how sleep disturbances, particularly early in life, right. can play a major role in brain development, yep. uh, emotional well-being, and even overall growth. Healthy and normal sleep in newborns depends largely on consistent routines. Mm -hmm. And managing those day and nighttime routines are essential in helping the babies learn to sleep. Yeah. So think about it this way. Sleep itself is natural, but the process of organizing sleep into blocks of time and learning day from night itself is not quite as natural and it's actually a learned process. Uh, and it takes a little time and isn't something that happens overnight, pun intended. Um, so, but with that, there's going to be some variation from baby to baby too, but there is some evidence that can help just about all of you to try to help make this process as smooth as possible and hopefully happen as quick as possible for you and your baby. So, here we go with our top 10 sleep tips that some we have certainly learned the hard way. Number one, babies sleep a lot. Babies can sleep 18 or more hours per day in those first few weeks of life. Unfortunately, it's not always at the times that are most convenient for you. Yeah, or in chunks of time that work out well either. Yeah. For our girl, she loved to be awake from 2 a.m. to 7 a.m. Yeah. every night yep. for the first two weeks of life. Yeah. Um, and so this day-night confusion is actually mm -hmm. super common to babies. If this is happening to you, you are definitely not alone. Yeah. Um, but hopefully some of the next couple of tips will help your baby learn the difference between day and night a little bit sooner. Number two. Light matters. So modifying the amount of light that a baby is exposed to can really help that baby know when it's time to sleep and almost more importantly, know when it's time to be awake. So you're going to want to try to let baby be exposed to light indoors during the daytime during those wake windows mm -hmm. because your body actually responds to light by making certain hormones and helps you adjust to the, that nighttime and daytime transition. So when you can during the day, Lights on for baby, at night keep the lights dim. Yep. And just to clarify here, it is absolutely okay to have a dark room for baby to take naps Very during the day. Yes. But you want to have light for when they're supposed to be awake between naps. Yes. Um, it's also good to know that 
lights on at night or even like a bright TV, yeah. etc., can kind of confuse the baby as to what time of day it is. And yeah. so, again, try to keep things bright for daytime feeds and much dimmer for nighttime feeds. Mm. Number three, wake windows. So wake windows are something that we didn't really know about or understand, but once we started paying attention, it made a huge difference for us and for our little girl in terms of getting better sleep. Yeah, and, and so what a wake window is, it is the time from the moment baby opens their eyes mm -hmm. to the time that you would expect them to be ready to go down to sleep again. Right. Um, and so trying to get a baby to sleep too early before the end of their wake window can be really difficult. Mm -hmm. And also pushing them beyond the end of when their wake window is can make it really hard leaving you with an overtired, super fussy baby that is equally difficult to get back to sleep for their nap. Yes, so on average, from birth to 12 weeks, the wake windows, so from the moment that baby opens their eyes till the time they're ready to go to sleep again, is somewhere between 45 and 90 minutes. Yeah, and so your goal was gonna be that baby wakes up, mm -hmm. they eat, they've got a little time to play and interact, yep. and then it's time to start that nap time routine again. Yes. Eat, play, sleep. We wanna pause right here to say that those first two weeks are really just about survival for baby and caregivers. Babies at this stage aren't quite ready to space those feeds to every three hours, um, like they will be in a few weeks. Yeah. And in fact, babies in the first couple weeks of life are gonna need to eat at least eight to 12 or even more times per day. Mm -hmm. But this is for a reason, okay? The big goals for these first couple weeks are mm -hmm. that baby is learning how to eat, yep. that baby is stimulating mom's milk supply to come in for those who are breastfeeding, right. and then also for bonding to occur between baby and caregivers. So if you are in those first two weeks, know that it will get better with time and that cluster feeding every one to two hours is eventually gonna be able to space out to more regular routine two to three hour feeds in the weeks to come. So hang in there. Number four, keep baby awake for feeding times and make sure they're getting the most out of each feed. Yeah. A huge part of good sleep is good eating and having a full tummy. Yeah. And as I've said, learning to eat takes time. So make sure you're getting the most out of every feed by keeping baby awake for it. And sometimes this takes some work. It might mean getting the baby undressed, changing a diaper between sides or halfway through a bottle. It might mean tickling their little feet or tickling mm -hmm. their neck or tickling their cheek. Um, you might have to get completely undressed. We had the lactation consultant we work with say, it should look like National Geographic at your house. You know, mom's skin to skin and topless and baby's naked and, and awake um, for those feeds. Yeah, and this is also a great time to use light. Mm -hmm. For those daytime feeds, make sure that baby's exposed to lots of natural light as possible. So the baby says, hey, it's really bright out. It must be time for me to be awake and doing something important. So this is probably a good time for us to share though. <laughs> Feeding is really tough, and yes. when feeding's tough, it makes sleeping tough. And so we've been breastfeeding, well, Sarah's been breastfeeding our baby. Yes. Um, I'm there to like help with latch, I guess. Um, but when the, like, the first couple weeks, especially as you're learning to feed the baby, baby's learning to eat, mm -hmm. that makes sleep tough too. Like day one, baby's stomach is the size of the end of your finger, and so mm -hmm. it gets filled fast, but then needs to be refilled quickly too. And so baby's gonna have shorter naps and need to eat more often. And it just makes it tough to get a decent nap. It does. And I think one of the mistakes we made early is that trying hard, working hard to keep the baby awake during those feeds. Um, and I know something I would do is I would be feeding her and she'd be you know, she was really angry and ready to eat and then I'd be holding her and she'd be eating and she'd be by me and she was warm and she'd fill her belly up just enough to be content and fall asleep. And we were so happy she was <sighs> sleeping. Uh, uh. Um, and but she wouldn't sleep for very long, yeah. right? She, Cause she didn't eat very much. And so then just, uh, it seemed like right away later, she is again really angry and hungry and we're doing this again. And so she gets next to me and she eats just enough to be warm and content and her little belly is just a little full and she falls asleep for a minute. And so 
we learned that you have to work to keep that cute, perfect little angel baby awake when you are feeding her. And sometimes I've got to rub her face or kind of tug on her ear, or rub her foot, or mm -hmm. Kurt will get up and take her to the other room and change her diaper when we switch boobs, like sides she's going to eat on to like get her up, get her in the light, get her awake. Um, because one of the keys to success is making sure she's they're getting, getting a good, good feed. Yep. Number five, nap times vary. So at this early stage, naps often are not the same length. Yeah, and in fact, babies in the newborn stage can have naps that are anywhere from 20 minutes to more than two hours. So if you put baby down for a sleep and they wake up 20 minutes later and are wide awake, could be totally normal. Or if you put them down and they're awake for more than two hours, also 100% developmentally appropriate in this stage. Yes, hopefully you got a nap during that time too. Yeah. Number six, try to have a schedule, kind of. So at this newborn stage, they're definitely gonna need to be nighttime feeds, mm -hmm. but try to think of daytime as the opportunity to get baby's tank as full as possible. Yeah, so you may have heard the phrase, never wake a sleeping baby. But at this stage of life, um, they're too young. They don't have enough energy stores to really be able to go for long stretches. So they need to eat every two to three hours. So for us, we kind of took the, changed the phrase to be always wake a sleeping baby during the day. So every two to three hours and then never wake a sleeping baby at night. And at this early stage of the game, that means you can let the baby maybe sleep for a four hour stretch overnight. Yeah, and feeding baby every two to three hours at this time is really gonna help you kind of get into that pattern and schedule for baby and start to recognize their cues of sleepiness too, to say, hey, I'm looking like I might be a little sleepy. Maybe it's time to start that nap time routine. Number seven, look for sleep cues to keep baby from getting overtired. Okay. Some common sleep cues that you may see from your baby are some obvious things like yawning or rubbing their eyes, mm -hmm. but can also be things like fussiness, jerkiness, clenching their fists, staring blankly, or red around their eyes, mm -hmm. or even you may start to notice that your baby starts to make certain noises every time they're getting close to their nap. So be thinking about the wake window time, and then when you see those sleepy cues, it is time to get your baby down for a nap because babies go very quickly from happy to sleepy to overtired and angry and really hard to put down for a nap. Number eight, use your support. Mm -hmm. Caring for a baby is a lot of work. Yeah. So anytime you can get help getting baby to sleep, use it. This can be things like having baby's bassinet on your partner's side of the bed or having your partner take the midnight shift when baby doesn't want to sleep. Um, it could be things like having grandma hold baby for a nap so that baby gets a good nap and then maybe you can get one too. Yeah, or alternate who's putting the baby down for the nap so that you can have some time to yourself. Number nine, don't forget the famous five S's to help soothe a crying baby. Yeah, and so these were developed by Dr. Harvey Karp, and they are swaddle, mm -hmm. shush, yep. sway, mm -hmm. suck, and side or stomach. Yeah. So what these mean. So things that you can do is swaddling your baby is a really important skill to have in terms of learning how to wrap your baby so their arms are safely at their side and they have that nice kind of womb-like feeling. Mm -hmm. Many of you may say like, gosh, my baby hates this. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, we thought our baby hated that too. But as we learn to like help her get through those first couple seconds of being swaddled, it's really gonna make a difference in helping them feel calm and then also stay asleep once they get asleep. Yes. Sway. Uh, you may have already started noticing the mom sway when you have that little baby in your arms. You want to be moving um, back and forth, some kind of sway that helps your baby feel calm. Yeah, it's kind of replicating the womb again in terms of baby spent nine months inside a mom who's been moving, moving around. Mm -hmm. um, the other piece of that is the shush. So being in the uterus is actually a pretty loud place as they're hearing the flow through the placenta. Yeah. So it sounds like shh can be really helpful and reassuring. This and, all... and on that note, when you're trying to do naps during the day, you're gonna wanna have a white noise machine on for the duration of the nap time. Pretty loud, 
um, but white noise is also key and it's kind of piggybacking off that shh sound. Yeah, it really helps kind of both drown out other noises, but also can be a very calming thing for a baby. Yeah. Um, the next one is going to be side or stomach, and this is not for when baby's sleeping, but just for while you're trying to calm them. You've got baby in your arms, you're doing this way, you're doing the shush, you have them swaddled, but also sometimes turning them on their side or on their stomach can really help them again feel kind of some of that tightness, um, while also like keeping their face away from looking at kind of faces in the room that can be distracting. This is one of my great tricks for a fussy baby in the office, is I take baby and I kind of pull their arms in on themselves and I put them on their side or on their stomach um, to try to help calm them before I have to listen to their heart or if they're just fussy while I'm trying to talk to parents. And that's also because when babies screaming, losing their mind, our reaction is to kind of want to look at them and say, hey, everything's okay, but that's adding more stimulation for a baby. So by having them kind of on their side, they're looking away from you and we're getting rid of some of that stimulation. Mm -hmm. The last one, the fifth S is suck. And so that is something like a pacifier. And when a baby is sucking on something, a pacifier, the breast, it's actually releasing endorphins that helps them calm themselves. Yeah, and so with a pacifier, they're not getting nutrients, but they're still getting those positive feel-good feel good mm -hmm. endorphins. Your baby may not like the pacifier. We know some people's babies don't, ours doesn't particularly, but if your baby is a pacifier baby, this is a great opportunity to have an extra tool in your pocket to help them calm when they're fussy, that then allows you to go from fussy baby to nap time. So the five S's really are so helpful in terms of getting good naps during the day and good sleep at night. Yep. And this, the swaddle was really one of those mistakes that we made early because we thought she hated it but they all kind of do because it's like a baby straight jacket. But really they love it because they can't startle themselves awake. They have this newborn reflex where they startle like this. So yeah, she we just were having about... lots of like naps that got ended early just because she startled herself Ugh. or where she was getting close to fall asleep and she would wake herself up. And so learning that, hey, she doesn't like the swaddle for the first couple seconds, but then once she like yeah. settles into it, mm -hmm. it's going to help her stay up sleep a lot longer. Yes. And I would say like the biggest keys for us having good nap success and nighttime success are going to be the wake windows saying like, hey, we're going to yes. work to see those sleepy cues and work towards nap time, bedtime. Right. As soon as we at, see those. At that one, one hour mark, we're thinking about, hey, we're looking for those sleepy cues. She's going to need to take a nap soon. Yep. And then the rest is all about sleep environment. So mm -hmm. she's napping or sleeping in a dark room. We've got white noise just to help both calm and drown out other noise. Yep. And then the swaddle. Yep. Number 10 just survive the first two weeks. Yeah. Um, being a parent of a newborn is really tough, yeah. um, but it's gonna get better. Mm -hmm. And hopefully using some of the tips that we've talked about is gonna help it get better a little bit sooner for you. Mm -hmm. Remember, this is all a learning process. Yeah. As baby learns to get better at eating, they're gonna hopefully get better at sleeping along the way. Mm -hmm. They're gonna learn how to put themselves to sleep, how to stay asleep or fall back asleep when they wake up in the night. Um, how to be happy when they wake up in the morning before you get them. Um, but these are all going to take time and practice. So good habits um, repeated over a long period of time is hopefully going to make things easier for you guys in the long run. Yeah, and you're going to figure out what works for your baby. Yeah. Um, so some of some other resources that we have used and thought were really helpful, um, number one favorite is the Taking Care of Babies online newborn sleep class um, and her Instagram at mm -hmm. Taking Care of Babies. So much good content all the time for free on her Instagram. Would totally recommend you check that out. Um, we've also read the book Happiest Baby on the Block by Dr. Harvey Karp. He is the guy we talked about who kind and of- the five S's. Yes, as well as he's the inventor of the snoo. Um, Which we didn't get. We have lots of friends who love it. Um, we just decided that wasn't something we wanted to use. Yeah. But. Um, and we also read the book 12 Hours of Sleep by 12 Weeks. It's written by this um, fabulous Brazilian mom of five who has then made it her life and career to help babies learn to sleep um, through the night. And so these 10 tips are kind of a um, 
putting together all of those resources that we have used. Um, so hopefully you find it helpful. Yeah, and just to kind of summarize the big points and mm -hmm. some things where there's actually some medical evidence about yeah. um, would be using light effectively to help baby learn the difference between day and night. Mm -hmm. Using touch to help calm the baby. Yeah. Um, using sound to help calm the white, baby. White noise. And also yeah. limiting sound when it's time to sleep otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, and then paying attention to wake windows, the sleep cues, the feeding Jeez. cues, um, and then making sure baby is well fed. Mm -hmm. Good eating is going to lead to good sleeping. Yeah. So that's all we have this week. Hopefully it helps all of you get a little extra sleep. If you are not subscribed to our channel yet, please do so you don't miss any of the content we have coming up for you guys. I hope you have a great week. Yeah. Bye guys. See ya. We're doctors. But not your doctors. Anything we've said in this video is for education or entertainment purposes only. It is not medical advice. Any specific medical questions you have should be directed to your provider.